Uh, I hate to bring up these excruciating losses, but the last two in Jordan Hare were obviously just painful to the nth degree uh, because they both should have been reasonably uh, an Auburn win if they just take care of football 101. However, yeah. they, of course, go to Tuscaloosa uh, this year, and their last six trips have all been pretty decisive awful. losses. They've lost by an average of 27 points per game. Right. Yeah, awful. Uh, so it used to be that Auburn, when it went to Tuscaloosa, had a lot of success. Now, as we know, many things changed in the Nick Saban era. Uh, but a lot of that, too, if you look at the history, is because they didn't play at the home fields of either school for a long time. It was played at Birmingham and Legion Field, uh, which you would also argue is pretty much an Alabama home field advantage, too, given their proximity to Tuscaloosa and showed up in the stands, too. Uh, yeah, Auburn doesn't have a lot of success on the road at Alabama these days. Obviously, uh, times have changed, and hopefully we can find a way to do that this year. I'm not sure what the projected win percentage you have uh, listed for Auburn or for Alabama in that game uh, for what, what you're looking at. But I would venture to say that if it's pretty low uh, for Auburn, that's correct at this point, just based off what we know, right? We have no clue what this Auburn team is going to look like in year two under Hugh Freeze. You've changed defensive coordinators. You've changed offensive coordinators. Yes, you have the same quarterback and the same running back, but you've got some new offensive lineman pieces. You are effectively, hopefully, completely changing the guard at wide receiver and having some new blood in there to give them a shot at trying to make this room their own. Um, tight ends are the same. A lot of changeover on the defensive side of the ball, too. The whole defensive back group is changed over, but sounds encouraging from what we're hearing out of practice. So um, a lot of unknowns, a lot of unknowns. And if that percentage is low, I expect it to be the entire year for Auburn to win in Tuscaloosa. And there's no shame in admitting that right now. But obviously, you got that's why you go out there and play the game. You just got to see what you got and then figure out how best to line up against each other. At this point, I went with 30%. 30%. That sounds about right. <laughs> I would, I, I'm honestly shocked it's not uh, lower than that. Um, it wouldn't also shock me that if Auburn were to go, uh, let's say they go 5 and 0 at home and they drop Georgia, uh, let's say they drop Missouri. Uh, let, let's say they have a bad day and drop Kentucky too as well. And then they take care of business, all the other places uh, you're coming in with three losses at that point. Uh, that's an Auburn team that I don't want to face in Tuscaloosa because that season is already an improvement. There's something to play for in a sense of uh, bold positioning. I, I would expect that would not be good enough to get into the playoff unless some weird shenanigans happen. But if I'm an Alabama person, I do not want to see a three-loss Auburn team coming in to Tuscaloosa because they will be uh, there'll be blood in the water. I think there will be a, an itch to right the wrongs of the last couple of years in Tuscaloosa. But for now, let's go with thirty percent. Why not? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's that's my thought at this point. And again, it's nothing scientific. Or it's just uh, looking at the landscape, looking at, uh, of course, the personnel and everything involved, but then also trying to compare that to everything else and trying to stay consistent sure. with the uh, work, making it all work. Yeah. Uh, our buddy Jackson's here. Mm -hmm. We appreciate Jackson. And uh, Jackson is asking, Kyle, what is your record prediction for Auburn? So many people are trying to get this out of me, the, the, an official prediction. And I, I usually wait till we get to fall practice to give an official prediction. But I, I will tell you, this is my operating principle, that I think Auburn as a program historically, and even now through what they've been through, their bare minimum expectation should be eight and four. And when you look at this season, I think you've got three clear question mark game, uh, uh, three clear games that Auburn is not going to be favored in and should not be favored in based on what we know. That is Alabama, that is Georgia, and that is Missouri. All of those are on the road. You could also argue that Oklahoma should be in that category and Kentucky on the road should be in that category too. And I'll grant you that. But I'm willing to put those into a question mark category, especially since Oklahoma's at home. Kentucky, as much as I like Mark Stoops, they just don't – they never seem to get over that hump. And so I'm just curious if that – by the time we get to that game, if this typical Kentucky that I normally see with a lot of hype around them comes out. So right now, my operating procedure, my operating principle 
is eight and four as the bare minimum expectation, it would not shock me in the least for Auburn to end up nine and three or seven and five if things took a little bit of a, if there was an, uh, you say you drop Georgia, Alabama, Missouri, Kentucky, and Oklahoma. So right now, if you want a kind of prediction, eight and four is what I'll give you. I'm right there with you, Kyle. I'm very comfortable with eight and four, and I just reviewed the schedule again, and I tend to group games together and think, Mm -hmm. okay, just as you did, not necessarily say they're definitely going to win this game. They're definitely going to lose this game. No, Uh, Texas A&M, Missouri, da-da-da, these are very light teams. Okay, they should win two of those four. Right. Tend to group those together and, and play the probabilities. I will say that... I'm going to review it a number of times, and no, that is not my official prediction, anyone. Uh, But because I've got this uh, metric that I may have at one point divulged to you that it hit me about five years ago in reviewing preseason publications that these publications are way too conservative. They basically take what happened last year and everybody's records about a game different, if that, Mm -hmm. for the most part. I'm talking about... Sure. All these prospective publications that are really good at what they do and providing the information and the snapshot of the season. But in regards to predictions, uh, so I thought, I wonder how accurate that is, because I at least had the perception that college football doesn't change much from year to year, that it it seems to be the same sport with the same teams. However, what I discovered mm-hmm. is those those teams are all way up here. That's right. Georgia, that's Alabama, Ohio State. They stay there. The rest of the teams are in flux constantly. So what I discovered, Kyle, in reviewing this every year, is I would look at the Power Five and I would say, okay, three games to me is a huge difference in team results and performance from year to year. Sure. So Auburn, for example, went six and six last year. If they go nine and three this year or three and nine, to me, that's a substantial change. Right. So I, I made that the barometer, at least a three game difference. And I was shocked. And when I ask our viewers this question, they are always surprised and always lowball it. When I ask out of the what is now 70 power conference teams, How many on average have a change in record of at least three games from one season to the other? What do you think that number is? Well, it sounds like it's going to be high. Yeah. (laughs) I always get the guess of like eight, nine, 10, something like that. Uh, 30 of them. How how many teams Uh, you're asking? How many teams? So it's been. Anyway, it's usually in the 22 to 25 range. Okay. Okay. I got you. Got you. So about a third of the teams have a drastic change in record from year to year, which if you're looking at the SEC and with 16 teams, five or six of them. Yeah. And, and, but if you try to determine which teams will those be, it's ex- an extremely difficult task. Yeah, I can, and I can understand why in a game like college football, um, as we just talked about with the Iron Bowl situation of a couple of years ago, uh, teams that have no business figuring something out, whether it's for a game or for the entire season. I mean, it feels like every year we're talking about some Cinderella that nobody was expecting, uh, making a, a big leap forward or a big leap back. I mean, who would have thought that Texas A&M would struggle as much as they did under Jimbo Fisher at the very end there? Um, so yeah, I can, I can see why people would think that college football is all the same when you're just looking at the top tier, but when you look at it as a whole, there's a lot more moving pieces. There's a lot more parody is, I guess is the appropriate word here than people think there is at least when we talk about not the ones we see and talk about every year at the end of the year, your Ohio state, your Alabama's, your Georgia's. Uh, Michigan's, I guess now, um, all of those in that category. So the fact that we're talking about in the twenties of teams having that big dip or that big jump forward doesn't surprise me. And I think that kind of fits well in with what we were just talking about with Auburn too. I don't think anybody expects it to take that nose dive of three games to a three and nine, but the more likely scenario is that Auburn could go up to nine and three very plausibly 
if they're able to get some pieces going like we've already discussed. Um, so I like our chances within uh, being one of those teams on the positive side of what you just addressed there, being the chain, the bigger change than I do of that not so great change. <laughs> Athlon has Auburn at number 32 in the country, number 10 in the SEC. I don't mm -hmm. know what that uh, equates to as a record. I don't have my Phil Steele in front of me to see what they have. I don't remember what the other uh, preseason prognostications are, but uh, number 32 in the country out of the SEC, that sounds like a seven and five football team. Yeah, it sounds like that's what should it should be based on what you're saying there. Um, I, I think the problem for me, and, and I don't shy away from this, I, I'm an Auburn content creator, so obviously I'm a fan of it. And obviously I, those orange and blue glasses, as much as I try to hold them up here on top of my head, as we get closer and closer to the season, they start sliding down. Uh, so it's kind of why I always start with the uh, eight and four principle and then make some more decisions based on what we're seeing throughout, obviously spring, the transfer portal, even though that's you know winding down now um, and has wound down. And then the rosters being set and going into fall practices, because you never know. One of a, a big injury here, a big in, uh, or something of that nature that we're not planning. On. Auburn just had one of those happen actually um, this past uh, spring, but it, you know it, it could go any way. And seven and five, I don't like, but eight and four, I'm comfortable with. How does? Uh... Uh, a Christmas trip to Memphis for the Liberty Bowl against West Virginia strike you. <laughs> that's that's the Athlon prediction. Uh, does it does it excite me? No, I, I will say this: um, I wouldn't mind playing West Virginia, uh, just because the last time we had a game with West Virginia, it was known as the Rain Game, which I attended as a student and was outstanding uh, in two thousand nine. So the opponent is not what it's would ex not excite me there it's we've been to memphis a lot i feel like over the last couple of years when we have made bowl games uh and i don't know that that one excites me all that much but here's what will excite auburn fans is a win in a bowl game we were talking about this on a live stream recently on our channel about how long it's been since auburn has consistently won its bowl games. Mm -hmm. And there have been a variety of reasons why that hasn't had taken place they ran into the i think the last one we won, if I'm not mistaken, was in the Music City Bowl versus Purdue. And unfortunately, it was the same year. Uh, I forget the the young kid's name who passed away of cancer. They're super mm -hmm. fan. His la and I, I don't want to be morbid here, but his last game, we literally just drove Purdue into the ground. I mean, it was oh. over in five yeah. seconds. And I and I just said, there's a no win for Auburn here. I mean, either, either we're the, the villains of beating this kid's team or... We lose, and then the fans are going to be calling for Gus Malzahn's head, which, let's be fair, they've been doing that since he got there. Um, bowl games, probably, as much as we ask the question of, do we prefer that, or do we think that's right, it's more so the question of, can we just get a bowl win for Auburn? I think that's where our focus is. Yeah, lost to Maryland last year. Lost yep. to Northwestern. Yep. Uh, in, uh, they, so, let's see, so that game was in 2018. 18, 18 again Purdue. So 19 was a loss to Minnesota. 20 was a loss to Northwestern. 21. Mm. 21. I'm trying to think. Did we go? No, that 21. Was the, we uh, lost to Alabama in the Iron Bowl. That was Harson's year. So maybe didn't go. Hmm. I'm trying to think now. I see there's so many bad memories. <laughs> so. no way, there's no way they missed two years in a row. No. Uh, 21, 22. So I. I know they missed one. We did miss one, and that would have been the final um, year of well, Harson was already fired, so it was the Cadillac Williams uh, interim 22. head coaching. Okay, yes. so we may have the, went somewhere, and I, I, I'm not remembering. That should be. Hmm. I'm not remembering either, but it was probably a loss to be honest. But uh, they lost to Maryland, yeah, Northwestern, Minnesota, so at least three losses, probably four. Why can't I remember that game? Anyway, I. Guy, I'm with you. Yeah, I am with you. Yeah. All right, Kyle. Is there any any news on the horizon? Any recruiting? Anything that uh, we mm -hmm. should we should know? Well, I can give you this to kind of round out our time today. Um, it was one of the things I thought we might get around to. We did get a um, flip from 
Penn State, one would argue that this particular recruit um, probably should have committed to us first, but there, you know, are obviously reasons kids make their decisions at the time that they do. Alvin Henderson out of Elba, Alabama, which is a little bit south of uh, more than a little bit south uh, of of Auburn, obviously in the vicinity, the backyard kind of of Auburn, you would think it'd make a lot of sense for him to come there. Jarquez Hunter is leaving after this season, uh, unless he's got some weird eligibility that I'm not aware of who knows if COVID years are done. We also are talking about this in the light of what's happened to Brian Batie and the incident that he was involved in that has left him uh, obviously in the hospital. We've gotten some positive updates with that recently too, which are great to hear. Uh, but I, I, outside of it being positive for his, 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 his personal life, I don't expect him back out on the field ever. Um, but that's not me saying that. Definitively, that's just me kind of reading the tea leaves there, so to speak. Um, that opens up a spot effectively. And I, I you got to think that um, for the for the coming years, as I would expect, Brian would have had some years left. So there's another opportunity for someone. Alvin sees that spot open up. The guy who recruited him, Cadillac Williams, uh, he obviously left and went to the NFL. Um, took some time to get to know Derek Nix, it looks like. And that relationship finally felt comfortable. It also looks like maybe Penn State was going after another running back or two. Uh, all of these things factored into his decision this last week to flip over to Auburn and uh, got uh, a lot of people really excited to have him as the, uh, part of the future of that running back room. Um, so that's probably the biggest news item that we've got right now. Uh, I know we talked about it last time. Everybody's still focused on Juju Lewis. Will he commit? Uh, <laughs> I get asked that thousands of times a day. Uh, but I, I, right now I'm pretty pleased with what Auburn's doing, especially with pulling off a flip of uh, Alvin Henderson from it's from Penn state. Kyle, you were looking at a box score from the 2021 Birmingham bowl, Houston, mm. 17, Auburn, 13. That's the game. I was there. Uh, and, and this is a uh, Curtis. You were at the game. You couldn't even remember the game. Uh, we got I've, that, I've that courtesy of our buddy Jackson. Thank you so much for looking that up. Uh, the only thing I remember from that game is there was a chance. Obviously it was only a four point game for Auburn to win the game. And I, I take my predictions very seriously and want to have a good record. And I was very annoyed because taking a low-end SEC team against a group of five team in postseason play is usually like mark it down, check it off, you're good to go. And mm -hmm. uh, they lost that game. And I know I lost, missed my prediction on that game. Sorry about that. Uh, I <laughs> wish I could have helped you out a little bit more. Um, yeah, that one... I Look, Houston, you can see, was was 12 and 2 at the end of the year. Auburn was 6 and 7. It's a high, historically, a high end SEC team. Houston at that point, what conference were they in? 12 at that and point? 2. So they they played in the conference championship game at the American Conference. So they so were, they were the a top. good team. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they were a good team. So you would think with a historically top tier team like, like Auburn in the Power Five, and then Houston, even with those respective records, this is going to be a good game, which I guess technically it was, just not on the Auburn side. Uh, I remember that this is the story of what was the Harson era. No offensive identity, no offensive cohesion, and this is the end of year one. Uh, you know, remember TJ Finley took over. Uh, it was a, I probably said a little bit more healed up, maybe not all the way at this point. I have tried to remove that one from my memory because – a variety of reasons we were all trying to forget the two harson uh years and uh that is a big reason why right there <laughs> oh now he's showing me the stats yeah i uh it's it's just a gene that i have that i've i uh once something comes up like this then i just want to know you it's know, hurtful the insignificant and i want to dig up the historical insignificance of a bowl game in birmingham in 2021 Tank Bigsby mm -hmm. with 96 yards, TJ Finley, 19 of 37 through a touchdown pass. Man. Yeah, there it is. I, I want you to look at this too. And I, we don't have the receiving ones up right now, but um, there we go. I, I want to look at the receiving tank. Kobe Hudson is gone. John Shemmer Shanker, uh, who was a great tight end for us, um, graduated. So no, no shame there. Javaris Johnson left. Demetrius Robertson graduated slash left. Shedrick Jackson graduated. You just, I mean, they all had what above, well, not all of them, but the, we had two guys, three guys above 50 yards, but nobody is really taken. Your running back is the leading receiver. And not that that's a bad thing every once in a while, 
but I think you're looking at one of the bigger problems of this Auburn offense over the last several years, the receiving. And yes, that is partly be with the quarterback play. And that is partly with offensive lines, providing a pass protection for the quarterback to be able to do what he needs to do. But yeah, I mean, that's just, you're hurting me really bad to making me relive this right now. <laughs> Sorry, Kyle. <laughs> Again, I, I, uh, love to dig up old uh, football games, even if they were insignificant and uh, refresh my memory. No, it's all right. Memory used to be lock solid. If you would have said, you know, 10 years ago, the 2014 Birmingham bowl, then I would have been like, boom, that was wow. the final score. But yeah, I, now that I pulled it up and Jackson gave us the, the results yeah. there once I, it clicked and I was like, Oh yeah, I remember that game. Yeah. I remember it now. I've tried to uh, forget it. And uh, the other thing too is I'll say about the Birmingham Bowl, the uh, the new well, it's not new anymore, but at that time it was new. The um, I keep trying to say the stadium. I kept trying to say arena for some reason. The stadium there is beautiful, especially for the size of um, UAB who plays there. But it is not, at least at that time, it was not set up well to handle the crowds that come in with an Auburn team being there. Uh, I remember that. That I, that's the things I remember is realizing, oh wow, we're going to actually lose this game when we seem to be in position to win this game, and then oh wow, this is not set up for the level of the uh, the Auburn family that continuously shows up, no matter how bad we are, to the football games. That's one thing I'll give credit to is you'll never be able to count out the Auburn fan base because they will show up for their Tigers, rain, shine, good, bad, and otherwise. 